In late 2014, Parsons Extreme Golf, or PXG as it's known, entered the crowded golf club market, led and backed by dot-com billionaire Bob Parsons. Marketed with a higher price tag than other manufacturers, the business had one simple but ambitious target. Golfing World attended the launch of the company's new facility in Scottsdale, Arizona, to hear their story. The whole start or the concept of the company was just really a chance meeting with, uh, with Bob Parsons. Over a number of months and then years, Bob and I became acquainted and he just out of the blue one day called me uh, and said, hey, I, I have an idea you might be interested in. Bob, you know, he has a, he's, he's got a, uh, a way of, of looking at things differently than, than other people look at it. And, you know, when people think that you're crazy or people think something's not possible, that's actually the best time to, to enter. And um, he actually motivated me, um, you know, to, to, to start thinking a little bit differently. And that maybe if we did something a little different than what everybody else was doing, that there was actually a space. One of the books that Bob had Brad and I read very early on, it was called The Innovator's Dilemma. And it's all about how to disrupt a marketplace in a current market. And if you can, if you can come up with a product that is superior to everything else out there, before anybody else can catch up to you, you will have captured a new market. You know, the underdog all of a sudden becomes the guy who's winning. And the guys who are winning, they can't catch up because they're already stuck in their own mode of business. So they can't afford to go after the new business because they can't afford to give up the business they currently have. And so you have the dilemma. The year before I started uh, PXG, I spent, got the receipts to prove it, over $350,000 on golf equipment. But I always would be disappointed that none of the clubs really delivered on the promise. And then one day, I was talking with Mike Nicolette, who was working at Ping at the time, and I was doing a what if. Mike, what do you think if we one day would start a company and we wouldn't have any cost constraints. You know, we would use the best process. We would use the best metals. We would have no time constraints where we had to rush and hurry up and, and, and cut bait so we could make it to market. Our only constraint would be performance. Initially, just started talking very conceptually about, you know, what it would be like to, you know, develop products with no constraints in terms of of um, trying to hit cost targets and things like that. As an engineer and as a product developer, that, that was pretty exciting, you know, to have that opportunity to go, oh, let's just go try and make the best possible golf club we can. As we started developing our clubs, I told the guys, I said, look, you got as long as you want to take, you got whatever money you need, but here's, here's our goal. We want a golf club that is slightly oversized. It has to look really sexy. Um, it has to look like a blade play like a cavity back. It has to be unbelievably soft and forgiving, and it needs to have a big sweet spot. And so the knowledge and experience that I had, the first thing immediately when I left his office, I said, well, if we're gonna make something that looks like a blade, but more forgiving than a cavity back, it's gotta be hollow. One of the big challenges with hollow body products is its feel. And so we had this idea, if we can somehow injection mold a, a, a rubber type material in there and fill the whole cavity up so it was almost like under compression that maybe that would work and it would feel really good and so we started working on trying to solve that problem and uh, when we got our first samples in and hit them I mean it was like an aha moment I turned around I, I hit my first ball with I turned around I look at Mike and I said holy cow <laughs> we did it I mean it felt it had that sensation it was like you're very you, from the very first time you hit it, you go, wow, that feels incredible and it feels completely different than anything I've ever hit before in my life. Once we were kind of comfortable that we developed our first prototypes, we wanted to get feedback from the best players in the world. And one of those guys that we went to first was Ryan Moore. I had played just about every iron he had ever designed. Uh, so there was a lot of comfort there for me. Um, and he, he sent the irons to me. They weren't approved by the USGA or anything like that at that point, and uh, he sent them, and, and I said, yeah, you can't have them back. He's like, uh-oh, uh, we, uh, we might need a, to, to figure this one out. He's like, we probably need, probably need to get a conforming set uh, before you like them so much. So, uh, I mean, I, I liked them instantly. I 
played the, the irons for, I think, six months before I even, we even came up with a deal or, or signed a contract. I, I just love the irons. I love the equipment. I kind of had some freedom in my contract I was in to play whatever irons uh, I wanted. And uh, in my opinion, they were, they were the best irons out there. PXG began the 2016 season by adding to their roster of players and securing their first tour win when James Hahn captured the Wells Fargo Championship in May. And while the price of their clubs will be prohibitive to many golfers, Parsons and his team remain unrepentant. In a startup company, you're not protecting anything. You actually have to go out and be different. You have to take risk. And in that leads you to um, new and different technologies. You have to create something that gives a person um, a reason to switch. Until we started, everybody marketed a big box. Everybody issued um, uh, update new clubs every six months or every year. They got price points they need to hit. They got cost numbers they need to do. They got time constraints. So the, the guys that are the engineers, I mean, their hands are really tied. Our engineers have no such impediments. I think that PXG is a disruptor. You know, everybody's scraping around at the bottom trying to find some profitability and trying to bring prices down. We were just trying to create the very best club, and we did that, but you, then you have to price it. You know, if you're gonna sell this, you have to price it to make a profit, so that's why our prices are high, and I think everybody else uh, that would have gone down that road would have said, there's not a market there. We're not even gonna waste our time, and uh, it turns out that there is a market there. As Bob likes to say, we have no limits. You know, we, we, we don't have any cost constraints. We don't have any time constraints. We just have a challenge, and that's to develop the very best products in the world. And so sometimes it's, it's easier said than, than actually done, but we're doing our best to continue to try to, to, to innovate and, and see where we can go from here.